the lion in you. Samu was a young man when he was drafted into the war. He'd volunteered to defend his country and bring honor to his family. But the war had changed him in ways he never thought possible. He had seen and done things that kept coming back to his mind and plunging him into sleepless nights. He had lost friends and had been wounded himself. Everything he had ever dreamed of suddenly seemed far away and out of reach. When Samu finally returned from the war, he was a broken man. He had trouble fitting back into society and no longer found joy in the things that he once loved. Instead, he felt alone and lost. One day, as he wandered the streets in despair, his path led him to a church. He sat down on a pew and began to pray. It was as if something inside him had been released. Suddenly, he felt a spark of hope and a deep peace that he'd not felt in a long time. In the weeks and months that followed, Samu went to church regularly and learned more about God and His love. He found comfort in the words of the Bible and in the fellowship of other believers. Slowly but surely, he began to feel better and shed the burden of the past. Samu became a different person. He'd found peace and a new purpose in life. He devoted himself to Bible study and was eventually ordained as a preacher. He traveled the country, sharing his story and the love of God with others who may have been as lost and desperate as he had once been. Samu inspired many people and proved that it is never too late to find God and make a new beginning. Samu made it his mission to proclaim the word of Jesus and bring comfort and hope to others. He traveled the country visiting churches, schools, and community centers to share his message. One day, he decided to travel beyond his country's borders and spread the message throughout the world. He signed up with a missionary organization and was soon sent to Tanzania. Samu was nervous at first when he arrived in a foreign country. He had never set foot on the African continent before and did not know what to expect. But he was determined to do his job and preach the Word of God. He was placed in a small village in rural Tanzania and immediately set to work. He visited people in their homes and learned about their culture and way of life. He preached in the village church and held Bible studies in the schools. Samu quickly made friends in the village and was greatly appreciated by the people there. He helped with farm work and with caring for the sick and needy. In addition, he taught the people how to live hygienically and how to protect themselves from disease. Samu spent several months in the village and profoundly impacted the people he met. He had made them feel that they were loved and valued and that there was a future for them. Samu became a vital part of the community. He cared about people and helped them where he could. He was popular and respected and had made many friends. One day, however, an incident occurred that shook the village. Two tribal warriors, who had been enemies for years, got into a brawl and an open war threatened a breakout between the two families. Samu knew he had to do something to defuse the situation. So he decided to invite the two warriors to his home and talk to them. He explained that violence was never the solution and that they should settle their differences. At first, the warriors were skeptical and wanted to avoid listening to Samu. But as time passed, they began to take in his words and think about them. They realized that Samu was right and that it was better to live in peace than war. Finally, the warriors decided to bury their feud and reconcile. They shook hands and sealed their reconciliation with a toast. The village celebrated the reconciliation and a big feast was held with African dances and songs. Samu was very proud that he had played a part in restoring the peace to the village. He'd shown that it was possible to find a solution even in the most challenging situations and that violence was never the answer. The feast to reconcile the two tribal warriors was in full swing when Samu suddenly had a vision. He saw God speaking to him and commanding him to leave for the savannah and pray at a specific place. Samu was initially confused and needed to figure out what to make of the vision. But he trusted in God and decided to follow the voice. So he said goodbye to the people of the village and set off into the savannah. After several hours of walking, he finally reached the place God had shown him. 
It was a stone shaped like a lance standing in the middle of the savannah. Samu knelt down in front of the rock and began to pray. He prayed long and hard and felt God give him strength and wisdom. He sensed that he was on the right path and God had given him an important task. When Samu finally finished his prayer and stood up, it had already become dark. He was tired and hungry, but also full of hope and confidence. He now noticed that he'd been surrounded by a pride of lions during his prayer. As many as 15 lions approached him and eyed him suspiciously. Samu was afraid, but he knew that he had to keep calm if he wanted to survive. So he stopped and began to speak to the lions. He told them about his love for them and his respect for them. Slowly but surely, Samu gained the lion's trust and the lions did not attack him. Instead, they sat around him and listened as he continued to pray and tell them stories. Samu spent the whole night with the lions. The people of Samu's village became apprehensive when they heard that he had gone into the territory of a pride of lions to pray. They knew that this was a dangerous place and that it was improbable that he would return alive. Despite their misgivings, some of the bravest men in the village decided to follow Samu to help him in case of emergency, so they packed their weapons and headed for the precinct. When they arrived, they saw Samu sitting in the middle of a circle of lions. The men were speechless as they saw the lions surrounding Samu and listening attentively as he told them stories. They could not believe what they were seeing and decided to watch Samu to ensure he was safe. Hours passed, and Samu and the lions seemed to have peace with each other. When they returned, they told everyone what they had seen, and soon Samu became known as a miracle worker. After Samu returned from his miracle experience in the lion's territory, he was solemnly accepted into the tribe by the people of his village. They revered him and subsequently called him the Lion because he had managed to gain the trust and respect of the lions. Samu was respected by all and his wisdom and ability to make peace were highly valued. As a result, he became an important figure in the village and many people came from far away to learn from him and share his wisdom. Samu lived many happy years in his village and was loved and revered by all. He became an essential part of the community's life and his story was passed down from generation to generation. Although he never returned to the lion's territory, he was always referred to as the lion. He reminded everyone that peace and understanding are possible if you overcome your fears and treat others with respect and love. After many happy years in Tanzania, Samu returned to his home country. He wanted to share his experiences with the lions and hoped his story would help others find peace and understanding in their lives. Samu sat down and wrote a book about his experiences in Tanzania. The book became a bestseller and many people read it and were inspired by Samu's story. People began to follow Samu and share his wisdom, and he became a spiritual leader in his country. He traveled around giving talks on love, forgiveness, and peace, and many people found comfort and inspiration in his words. Samu's book was also made into a movie and became a worldwide hit. Samu became a famous personality, and many people worldwide knew his story and were impressed by his wisdom and courage. Samu lived many more happy years and helped many people find peace and fulfillment. Have you ever overcome your fear and been rewarded for it? Do you have confidence in your own powers? Tell us your story. Feel free to tell us what you think about it in the comments.